All right guys, this is a very quick video about how to safely wash your car, especially if you've had it detailed and ceramic coated or had paint protection film applied. I'm gonna go over the steps very quickly. It's not gonna be a 25 minute video how to do a 98 step five bucket safe wash. This is just a regular safe wash that you can do at home easily without having to get too fancy about specific techniques. With that being said, there are a few products that I do wanna go over very quickly that are important as part of the process. So step one is gonna be a pre-wash. So whether it's a citrus pre-wash in a pump sprayer such as this, or a snow foam, it's very important that you try and get as much dirt off the car before you go in with your wash mitt. Uh, also known as a contact wash. We have a wash bucket here with a very nice microfiber wash mitt and a grit guard. We've got a couple of shampoos. This one is a pH neutral shampoo, which is just great for everyday washing. This one is a acid shampoo which is great for helping to remove any sort of lime scale or mineral buildup on the paint that's happened over time with this car i've not washed it since november it's now uh, the end of march start of april so it's been a good sort of four or five months here we've got a rinse bucket again with another grit guard it's very important to help keep the dirt at the bottom of the bucket so you're not stirring it up so i've got two buckets and two grit guards and of course we've got our wheel bucket here so it's completely separate to the rest of the washing process We've got a variety of brushes in this little brush organizer here. Right, we're gonna crack on with the process. So the first step for us and how we do it is the wheels. That being said, if you do wanna do the wheels at the end, there's not really any issue with it. A lot of people seem to be like, you must do the wheels first. And uh, I'm not quite sure the reason why. The only reason why I can think that is so that any dirt on the wheel when you're washing doesn't get onto the paint. But if you're doing a final rinse of the paint at the end, it doesn't really make a difference. But we will do the wheels first in this case. So we're going to spray on uh, iron-based fallout um, wheel cleaner. And then we're going to get in there with some brushes, give it a rinse off, it's gonna look amazing at the end. With certain types of wheel finishes, you do wanna be somewhat delicate. So this is a gloss black wheel. So ideally you'd rinse it off first, get the heavy sort of dough off, there is a question about whether you rinse off first or if you just spray your chemical on and go straight in with your compact wash. Pros and cons to each. If you rinse off, you are taking a little bit of dirt off, but then your chemicals are going to be less effective because they're sort of diluted with water. Take that on a case by case basis as to what you guys want to do. So I've got my wheel bucket here. I've just put a bit of normal car shampoo in it. I'm going to zhuzh it up with the jet wash. Get some nice foam on the go. I also have my citrus pre-wash here. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna spray it on the tires. I'm not gonna really bother with the arches on this. It's my track car, so I don't really care. Uh, but it will just help get through any sort of grease and grime on the tires. Got my wheel cleaner as well. Just gonna spray this generously over the whole wheel, including the brake caliper and the inside of the wheel. That's gonna take sort of three or four minutes to react and work. So it's not too sunny today. I don't have to worry about it drying off in the sun either. Going in with a stiff bristle brush here. Try saying that after a long night out, stiff bristle brush. Just getting the tire scrub to remove any sort of heavy grease. Take that in a bucket, shake it off. Next, I'm gonna go in with a long reach barrel brush. Just get in to the wheel itself and clean the inner barrels. Very often forgot about part of the detail. And it has just started to rain, so that's brilliant. But I'm gonna keep going because we're hardcore. You want to make sure to get around the brake caliper as well. So you saw I just went down with the barrel brush between the wheel hub and the caliper itself. I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush to go on and around the caliper, make it look nice. Just getting around the wheel lug holes as well. And then all the corners as the spokes. Finally, we're going to use a wash mitt. 
this is just a small finger mitt and I'm just going to use that to go on the actual spokes itself and try and get around the back of the spokes. And now we're just going to get the wheel off. There you go, clean wheel. Just got to repeat that for the other three. All right, the wheels on the Megane are all cleaned now. As you can see, it started to rain, so I've got a hood up, but we're going to crack on regardless. We're going to get onto the bodywork. So we're going to start with the citrus pre-wash. We're going to spray that sort of on the lower half of the car. Then we're going to go over the top with our snow foam, allow it all to dwell and react and pull off all the dirt from the paint as much as possible. And then we're going to rinse it off and then we'll go in with our contact wash. And you might be wondering, do these sort of pre-washes damage your ceramic coating? The answer is no. As long as it's a fully fledged ceramic coating, something like G-Technic, Gion, Labo Cosmetica, Infinity Wax, something along those lines. If you do have a regular sort of wax, something like, uh, you know, Chemical Guys Butter Wet Wax or Maguire's Gold Class Wax, or even, you know, Gion Wax or something like that, then you are going to reduce the life of that wax quite substantially. You might end up having to re-wax a car after using it even a single time. But I guess the question is, would you rather have extra swells in your paint or just have to re-wax or apply some other sort of spray sealant to your car? I know what I would choose. The important thing here when snow foaming is to make sure that you get the whole car covered. It doesn't really matter if you snow foam from top to bottom or bottom to top. Because my car has been stood for a while, I'm going to go around with a little detail brush on some of the satin plastics and trims and stuff and get them all cleaned up. So all I'm doing is just using a brush in the rubbers and trims. I'm not using it on the paint. You don't really want to use these on paint unless you're polishing. And I'm not sure if that comes up on camera, but you can see all of the dirt running down here. You can see here all of the dirt that's been pulled off by the snow foam and the pre-wash. So that's all dirt that's been encapsulated and has run off of the paint, meaning it's a lot cleaner when we go in for the contact wash. Now we're just going to rinse off. You might have heard a lot of discussion whether you go from the bottom to the top, the top to the bottom, when you're rinsing off. It doesn't really matter. People have their own way of doing things. So again, I'll leave that one to you. I personally go from the top down. And since I brushed out all of the channels, I'm going to make sure that I jet those clean as well. Now we'll get into the contact wash section. So I'm going to fill up my wash bucket with some shampoo. This particular shampoo is Infinity Wax Pure. But I'm also going to do a second wash with Labo Cosmetica Perfecta, which as I mentioned is an acid wash, which is going to help remove any sort of etchings and just rejuvenate the coating and bring it back to full strength. This is quite a strong shampoo. I think it's up to 1900 to warm or something like that. You don't need a lot. So I think the correct amount would be something like that. I like to put a little bit more in just because I like suds. The downside of that is you need to rinse more. Foamed up the bucket. I'm gonna clean our grit guard quickly since it's been on the floor for demonstration purposes. I'm sure somebody on the comments will be like, you can't put that in the bucket, it's been on the floor. It's clean as a new one watch me and it is very simple we're going to go from the wash bucket to the paint we're going to always wash top down and we're going to use straight line motions we're going to do a panel half a panel we'll see how dirty it is we'll go into the rinse bucket rinse it off rub it on the grit guard and then we're going to go back into the wash bucket it's a very simple process uh, i'll show you now so wash 
panel. And also do the glass as well. Because you can't really swell glass while washing. There's no problems. Wash it into the rinse bucket and I'm just rinsing it off. And I'm just rubbing the, the wash mitt on the grit guard just to help release any sort of trap dirt or debris back into the wash bucket. And we're going to go back onto the panel. I won't bore you with the rest. It's very simple, straight lines, work top to bottom. Go from wash bucket to panel, panel to rinse bucket, rinse bucket to wash bucket, and back onto the panel. Just gonna give the card a final rinse down now. The car was originally coated in July of 2023. It's now start of April, 2024. The last time the vehicle was washed was in third week of November. It's not had any top up products applied. There's no spray sealants or hydrophobic boost products. It's just how the coating has held up and it's been sat around for the last two or three months. I've probably done 20 miles in the last three months. Uh, I'm very happy with how the coating is performing. Car came out very easily, so just shows the benefit of having your car ceramic coated. We're going to get onto the drying stage now. So it's very important that you don't use a chamois leather or a chamois or however you pronounce it. One of those leather rags, don't use it. Don't use a water blade or anything like that. You want to use something like this, which is a microfiber drying towel. These are much softer. They're just as effective as uh, drying your paint and other methods, but they're much more gentle on the paint. I'm going to show you a couple of methods that you would do. So number one is the pat method, which is technically the safest, but it does take the longest amount of time. So to do that, you would lay the towel over the panel that you're going to dry, and then you just pat it so there's not any sort of pulling or moving. And you lift your towel up and you've got a dry section. That's not really that effective and it takes forever. So I don't really recommend doing that. What I would do is get your towel, fold it in half or depending on how big the towel is, lay it on the panel like so, and just pull it with no pressure and that will get all the moisture off. Just carry on like that around the rest of the car. Again, try and drive from the top down just in case you do get the towel on the floor, pick up any dirt or anything like that. You can also just sort of drag the towel around much like I'm doing here. Right guys, that's the very simple process of giving your car a safe wash at home. There's no need to be intimidated. It's a very simple process. It takes between one and two hours, depending on the size of the vehicle and how fast you're working. Feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. You can email us at info at ontrackdetailing.co.uk.